तव कथात तप्तजीवन कविरीड़ कलमशापम श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदादत भुवि गृणंत ये भूरीदा जना श्री श्री रामकृष्ण कथामृत द गॉस्पल ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण वी आर डिस्कसिंग द प्रोफाउंड स्टेटमेंट मेड बाय श्री रामकृष्ण इन द वेरी फर्स्ट मीटिंग विद एम व्हिच इज संध्या मर्जेस इन टू गायत्री एंड देन गायत्री मर्जेस इन टू ओम संध्या गायत्री ते लय है अबार गायत्री ओंकारे लय है वी डिस्कसिंग द वेरियस मीनिंग्स एंड सिग्निफिकेंसेस ऑफ ओंकारा एज डिस्क्राइब्ड इन द उपनिषद्स द कठो उपनिषद स्पीक्स अबाउट ओंकारा व्हेन नशिकेद आस्क्स अ क्वेश्चन यू हैव सीन द ट्रूथ ओ यमा माय आचार्य कैन यू प्लीज डिस्क्राइब दैट टू मी अन्यत्र धर्माद अन्यत्र धर्माद अन्यत्र अस्मात् कृता कृतात् अन्यत्र भूताच्च भव्याच्च यत्तत् पश्यसि तद्वद दैट व्हिच यू सी प्लीज टेल मी व्हाट इज दैट दैट व्हिच इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम धर्म एंड दैट व्हिच इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अधर्म एंड दैट व्हिच इज बियॉन्ड प्रेजेंट पास्ट एंड फ्यूचर दैट इज टाइमलेस please describe that to me then yama says sarve veda yat padam amananti tapam si sarvan cha yad vadanti yad ichchanto brahmacharyam charanti tatte padam sangrahena bravimi o mitye tat i will tell you that very briefly which is the essence of all the vedas yas chandasam rishabho vishvarupah taitri upanishad chandasam rishabh that is the essence the king of all the upanishads rishabh the greatest the chief vishvarupah all pervading what is that om ityetat and says om is parabrahman and it also aparabrahman aparabrahman called the hiranyagarbha saguna with qualities may or may not be with the form sakara or nirakara but saguna and the <coughs> nirguna brahma brahman without qualities parabrahman omkara represents both the parabrahma as well as <coughs> the upper brahma it can be used as a pratika symbol of brahman and it's also the vachaka the vachya being brahman and the vachaka that by which the vachya is designated is the vachaka which is om yoga sutra says tasya vachaka pranavaha pranava om is the vachaka or the vachya which is brahman etadalambanam shreshtham etadalambanam param etadalambanam gyatva brahma loke mahiyate this is the greatest support <coughs> this is the supreme support and taking hold of the supreme support one rejoices with infinite bliss in the brahma loka etad jevaksharam brahma etad jevaksharam param etad jevaksharam gyatva yo yadichati tasya tat this akshara this letter om this is brahman para brahman para brahman knowing this om the significance of om <coughs> one can realize whatever one wants either the supreme brahman para brahman or the upper brahman and the great commentator shankara acharya says in the bhashya on the kathopanishad in this verse 
अपरम चेद प्राप्तव्यम परम चेद ज्ञातव्यम इफ इट इज परब्रह्मन इट हैज बी नोन इफ इट अपर ब्रह्मन देन इट हैज टू बी अटेन्ड इट हैज बी प्राप्तव्य इट हैज बी अटेन्ड ज्ञातव्य इट हैज बी रियलाइज टू कैंड ऑफ ब्रह्मन आर स्पोकन अबाउट इन वेदांता शंकराचार्य हाईलाइट इज अ गेय ब्रह्मन एंड उपास्य ब्रह्मन उपास्य ब्रह्मन इज दैट विच इज वर्शिप्ड एज अदर देन योर सेल्फ एंड गेय ब्रह्मन इज दैट विच इज रियलाइज इज योर ओन वेरी सेल्फ एंड उपनिषद एक ब्रह्मन इज दैट विच इज रियलाइजेबल एज आइडेंटिकल विद योर ओन सेल्फ so the upanishad often talks about upanishadam brahma that brahman which is expounded in the upanishad yagya valkya is challenged in the brahmaranya upanishad with other sages upanishadam purusham prachami yo yagya valkya i am i am asking you about that purusha which is expounded enunciated in the upanishad sarvam brahma upanishadam in the kena upanishad shanti mantra all this is brahman what kind of brahman upanishadam brahma that brahman which is spoken of in the upanishad <coughs> and this brahman which is spoken of in the upanishad says para brahman and apara brahman and the para brahman which is realizable as your own self that is the essence of om gayatri merges into om means the awakening of the dhi which is mentioned in the gayatri mantra dhiyo yo na prachodayat this awakening leads you to the realization of om this dhi is the vigyanamaya in vedanta and this corresponds to the anahata chakra in the tantra and that is the awakening of adhi in the gayatri mantra this is called medha in the vedas the medha suktam it's called pragya ritambhara pragya pragya aloka the light of pragya in the yoga sutra is called a buddhi guha in the vedanta the cave of the heart dahara akasha hridaya akasha hrid padma in the yoga and hridaya akasha in vedanta and this is called the heart in the christian mysticism the prayer of the heart early fathers of philokelia talked about the prayer of the heart the heart is the hridaya which is the vigyanamaya so all these realizations of people across the globe whatever be the religious tradition means this om mani padme hum in the buddhism the mani padma is the heart that's the great mantra which they repeat in the buddhistic tradition so all the realizations of all the spiritual seekers and seers and saints and sages across religions is the heart center the location and the uh, discovery of the heart center is the greatest discovery in spiritual life some more look at the heart and abide there abide in the heart the spiritual heart and from the spiritual heart we move on still farther attain the cosmic spiritual heart which is called the hiranyagarbha the cosmic intelligence the cosmic buddhi samashti buddhya upahita chaitanya which is saguna brahman from there move on to the nirguna brahman the highest by merging all the external senses into the internal and merging all the senses into the mind and merging the mind into the buddhi or the vigyanamaya and that merging into the cosmic vigyanamaya which is dharanagarbha and then on moved to the highest which is called shanta atman 
यच्छेद वांग मनसी प्राग तद्यच्छेद शांत आत्मने शांत आत्मने महति नियच्छेद तद्यच्छेद ज्ञान आत्मने ज्ञानम आत्मने महति नियच्छेद तद्यच्छेद शांत आत्मने यच्छेद वांग मनसी प्राग तद्यच्छेद ज्ञान आत्मने ज्ञान आत्मने महति नियच्छेद तद्यच्छेद शांत आत्मने all the walk etc the indriya should be merged in the manas manas in the buddhi and the buddhi in the cosmic buddhi which is the hiranyagarbha the mahat and that should be merged ultimately in the supreme brahman and omkara represents this brahman so by this one letter repetition of this one letter the savana manan nidhyasana and constantly getting merged our consciousness into the om one realizes the highest this is the secret of spiritual realization as spoken of in the upanishads and the upanishads clearly say for the sanyasis for those who have completely renounced all worldly bondage and worldly ties for them the only sadhana is repetition contemplation absorption in om they will not have any book with them they will not chant anything they will not do any upasana except just contemplating on om and merging in om shuddha pranava and this om is described elaborately in that small upanishad called the mandukya upanishad consisting of just 12 mantras it is the smallest and the greatest and the deepest and most profound so much so gaudapada acharya shankara's guru's guru shankara acharya's guru is govinda bhagavat pada govinda bhagavat pada's guru is gaudapada acharya Gaudapada Acharya is supposed to belong to the uh, eastern part the Bengal and others as own outstanding advaitin ajatavadin he wrote mandukya karika verses on the mandukya upanishad 12 verses in four chapters prakarana and shankara acharya wrote commentaries bhashyas on the upanishadic verses the 12 of them as well as on the mandukya karika so this upanishad is of great importance so we will try to describe omkara which is the subject of our discussion now shandha gayatri te lai hai gayatri abar omkare lai hai we will try to discuss this omkara from the point of view of the mandukya upanishad mandukya upanishad begins by saying a simple statement om ityeta daksharam idam sarvam idam sarvam all this the entire universe is om ityeta daksharam the whole of the manifested world and the unmanifest is just om then adds on tasya upavyakhyanam what is the upavyakhyana what is immediately to be understood from here bhutam bhavad bhavishyaditi sarvam omkara eva bhutam the past bhavad the present bhavishyad the future that means om pervades all time and ultimately transcends time yachanyatra kalatitam tadapyonkara eva trikalatita that which transcends the trikala jagrat swapna susupti the past present and future all of them is only omkara that means omkara is both time and timelessness 
This is very important to understand. Omkara has as its campus of definition, it encompasses the entire spectrum of time and timelessness, relative and absolute, imminent and transcendental, this world as well as the next world. That is the beauty of Om. Jagra Svapna Sushupti, which we experience in this world, and beyond that, the Turiya Avastha, which is a transcendental Samadhi experience, Beyond time, that's also Omkara. The gamut of experiences described by Omkara is a vast gamut of this and the next, relative and the absolute, manifested and the unmanifest, Saguna and Nirguna. Yachanya trikala tidam tadapi omkara eva Bhutam bhavad bhavishyaditi Past, present and future, the whole of time And also Trikala tita, that which transcends time Is also om It's a very very significant verse So, Omkara is the nearest sadhana for approaching Brahman. What is the nearest, easiest way to approach Brahman? Just doing the sadhana of Om. Chanting of Om, absorbing in Om, contemplating Om. That's why all the mantras in Hinduism will always begin with Om. Whatever be the tradition. That's why Swami Vivekananda once said, we should have a universal temple acceptable by all the sects of Hinduism as well as the other religions where the only symbol will be Om, nothing else. Even the various religions also can be included in this. Because the religions of the world describe either the transcendental, supreme, formless, qualityless Brahman, God, or they describe that which is with quality, saguna, with form, etc. So the Om encompasses the entire spectrum. And Om is the name of Brahman. Just like if you call somebody by his name, he responds. In exactly the same way, if you say Om, Brahman immediately responds, did you call me? Aham is the name of the Atman. Buddha Aranyakupanishad says, Aham means this I, which is the Atman. And the Advaita Vedanta says, this I, Aham, is identical with Om, which is Brahman as exemplified and taught in the Mahavakya, the great saying, Aham Brahmasmi. The first mantra, as we said, Omitte Tadaksharam Idam Sarvam. Mark the equation. Idam Sarvam Om. Then next mantra says, second mantra, Sarvam Hyata the Brahma. So the first mantra, Idam Sarvam Om. Om is all this. Second mantra says, Sarvam Hyata the Brahma. So Om equal to Idam Sarvam. Second mantra says, Idam Sarvam equal to Brahma. That means Om equal to Brahma. Then Next statement in the second mantra, I am Atma Brahma. Om equals Idam Sarvam. Idam Sarvam is the same of Brahma and this Atma is Brahma. So you have Om equal to Brahma, 
ஆத்மா ஈக்குவல் டு பிரம்மா இதம் சர்வம் ஈக்குவல் டு ஓம் இதம் சர்வம் ஈக்குவல் டு ஆத்மா இதம் சர்வம் ஈக்குவல் டு பிரம்மா ஸோ இட்ஸ் அ பியூட்டிஃபுல் ஈக்குவேஷன் தி யூ கெட் தட் தி என்டயர் வேர்ல்ட் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் அஸ் என்டயர் வேர்ல்ட் பியாண்ட் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் all of them are completely subsumed in this one small letter called om sarvam hi etad brahma ayam atma brahma sarvam hi etad atma atma is brahman all this is brahman and atman is brahman and that is om so you have an equation consisting of four limbs Om equal to Idam Sarvam equal to Brahma equal to Atma. So you have four, two at a time if you take, then you'll have Om equals Idam Sarvam, Om equal to Atma, Om equal to Brahman. Idam Sarvam equal to Brahma, Idam Sarvam equal to Atma, Idam Sarvam equal to Om. and so you have a very very simple equation for spiritual life all the complicated formula and upasana all that you leave out simply if you want to realize the atman which is you which is me which is our own inner essence one simple key to open the inner spiritual treasure of the atman within is just om with the key of om you can just unlock open the treasure within which is nitya shuddha buddha mukta ananda swarupa your own higher self ever free ever awakened ever pure atman sat chit ananda swarupa existence absolute knowledge absolute and bliss absolute just one small key om just touch now you know what is opening happens by just a touch you have a touch and uh, uh, in the android phone you put on pattern in order to open the uh, um, the 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 phone so you can have so what it says is sometimes you put the square sometimes you put the cross so upanishad says if you want to open this spiritual android which is your own higher self on the top you write touch om and it opens <laughs> you can try it out in the android phone when i have it next ஓம் இத்தேதரம் இதம் சர்வம் பூதம்வதுவிஷதி சர்வமோங்கார சர்வம் ஹேதிரம் அயம் ஆத்மா பிரம் திஸ் ஆத்மன் இஸ் பிரம்மன் நோ தேட் விச் ஹஸ் பீன் கால்ட் ஓம் ஆல் திஸ் இஸ் ஓன்லி பிரம்மன் விச் இஸ் ஓம் earlier om is all this past present and future there's manifested relative world idam sarvam that omkara is spoken of as the vachaka the vachya being brahman the oneness of the vachaka vachya is shown by saying om ityedadidam sarvam vachaka and vachya are identical nama nami abhed the name by which you call an object and the object itself are identical this is the significance in the bhakti shastras in devotional practices you would chant the name of god name of god and god himself are not different because the name is capable of revealing to you god 
So you have great devotion to the name. You go on chanting the name itself. And the entire power and potency and the glory of God is hidden in this name. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in that famous Stotra hymn, Shikshashtakam, eight verses on spiritual education. He says, O Lord, you have created innumerable names. And in each of these names you have poured yourself completely, your power, your glory, your majesty, everything is hidden in this name. And you have not stipulated any specific time or place in which to chant this name. Any time, anywhere, in any condition. Sarvada, Sarvatha, Sarva Avasthasu. You can chant his name. So much is your grace, O Prabhu. But such is my misfortune, my wretched condition of mind, that I have no devotion to your name. Ruchi. Name Ruchi is one very important condition in spiritual life. When you chant the name of God, you feel great joy. Just like, suppose you love somebody very deeply, the moment his or her name is uttered, you simply feel some thrill. His name, his form, his voice, the things which he used, everything thrills you. In exactly the same way, the moment God's name is uttered, we feel thrilled. We started with this. Remember, Jodi Harinam, Ramna Mucharan Matri Jadi Ashrupath Hai Roman Chahai Takon Ar Kaj Kurte Habena Shandha Gayatri De Lai Hai Gayatri Abar Unkare Lai Hai The moment you chant the name of Hari or Ram even once, tears pour down from your eyes and this horripilation all over body, your hair stand and end then you will know all work has completely dropped from you. All the work merges into Gayatri prayer and the awakening of the higher consciousness to the Jnanamaya and that once again merges into Om. This is the experience of spiritual sadhakas because the name of God immediately kindles in you the image of God, the form of God, His glory, His power, His love, His infinite majesty, and you simply are drawn by it. In worldly love, we can see, the moment you utter the name of your beloved, immediately there is so much of horripilation, a thrill, you feel transported. And as I say, in the case of God, a million times more you will be transported. The moment Sri Ramakrishna uttered the name of Hari Kali, he immediately got transported to a different world and got, lost himself in Samadhi. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one moment, if he forgets God's name, he feels excru excruciating pain. You can't live without God any moment. Nam Namakari Bahudha. Nijasarva Shaktis Tatrar Pitani Amitas Marane Nakalaha Eta Drishi Tavakrapa Bhagavan Mamapi Durdaiva Midrishami Hajani Nanuragaha. I have no devotion to your name. That's my misfortune. So much of power you have put into that. So go on repeating God's name. Hundred thousand times you go on repeating. Not mechanically, but with great love. Because every utterance of God's name thrills you, transports you, elevates you, gives you so much of joy. So go on repeating his name. And this name is so pure, auspicious, and leads you to the highest. Brahma Gamayati. 
it leads you to Brahman. Swami Vivekananda therefore wrote in his hymn, the Aratrik hymn, Om Hrim Rutam Antvamachalo Gunajad Gunedyaha. In that he wrote, writes towards the end, Shnantam Shivam Suvimalam Tava Namanatha Krityam Karoti Kalusham Kohakantakari. Kohaka Antakari. Kohaka means Maya. That which is an obstacle, illusion, that covers you, covers the truth. Antakari, the Kohaka, the Maya, delusion, is destroyed. By what? By your name. And Kalusham Krityam Karoti, that which appears to be sinful, bad, an obstacle, the entire thing is changed by the touch of the name. The whole thing becomes luminous and emancipates you to higher realms. Krityam Karoti Kalusham Kohakantakari Shnantam Shivam Suvimalam Tava Nama Natha He Natha, O Lord, Tava Nama, your name. What is your name? Shnantam, ending in Shna. Rama Krishna, Shna Anta. Ending in Shna, your name, what does it do? Kalusham Krityam Karoti. A person who is wicked is immediately turned by the Medas touch of your name and becomes the purest of the pure. He becomes elevated, becomes a saint, he becomes a sage. What is the quality of your name? Shnantam, ending in Shna. Shivam, Suvimalam. Shivam, auspicious. Suvimalam, extremely pure. You are so pure, so great, so majestic, so glorious. This name is Om. The moment Om you utter, you become, become purified. That's what the Bhagavad Gita says towards the end. Om Tat Satidinadesho Brahmanastra Vidhasprataha. Brahman is described, thought of in three ways Om Tat Sat. Om means Brahman, Tat means Brahman, Sat. It means Brahman. So the, the magic formula which is very often used in uh, Upasana, in the Puja, in Hinduism very commonly is Om Tat Sat. When you say Om Tat Sat and sprinkle some Ganges water or some water, the whole thing becomes purified. Om Tat Sat is the name of Brahman, Om is the name of Brahman, Tat is the name of Brahman, Sat is also Brahman, of which Om subsumes everything. The moment you say Om, Brahman responds. So the mantra, the greatest mantra for persons who are not inclined to having meditating and form and name and quality and so on, they can simply think of Shuddha Pranava. It's called Shuddha Pranava. So, Sarvam Heta the Brahma, all this is Brahman. So, Pranava is Vachya and having this Vachya, Vachya Vachaka Aikya is shown. Vachya is that which is designated Brahman. Vachaka is that which designates. Vachya is Nami. Vachaka is Nama. And Nama and Nami, Vachya and Vachaka are Abhinna, identical. Omkara is the Vachaka, Tasya Vachaka Pranavaha. Now Vachya Vachaka Ekatva Bodha, the realization of Vachya and Vachaka 
if it takes place then vachya vachaka both of them merge and brahman is seen so this is a very interesting process which the upanishad teaches us first go for vachya which is brahman which is describable through the vachaka om and when you chant om when you chant the mantra remember that the mantra represents god himself we have been taught by the gurus when you chant the mantra and meditate in the form of the ishta devata remember these are identical vachya vachaka are abhinna non different identical <coughs> then when vachya vachaka slowly as realized as abhinna not imaginatively not through thinking process but actually when you realize this both vachya and vachaka merge into one indivisible sachidananda which is brahman both vachya and vachaka vanish the name and the named both of them merge into one of which the name and named are two different manifestations one indivisible brahma vastu consciousness divides itself into name and named nama nami vachaka vachya <coughs> word and the thing and the meaning vak and the artha vak that's why the great statement made by kalidasa at the beginning of raghuvamsam which is well known vagartha vyavasamprakto vagartha pratipatyaye jagatah pitaro vande parvati parameshwaro parvati and parameshwara brahman and shakti are identical like vak and its artha so if you realize the nama nami abhedatva the non difference or identity of nama and nami vachaka and vachya and both of them merging into each other merge into that substance of which they are manifestations and that substance designated by om alone remains which is brahman this is the process om ityedaksharam brahma sarvam etad brahma and ayam atma brahma what is the difference between saying it brahman and brahman atman these are two names which are used to describe the same substance atman is something which is here nearby idam etat these words are used and tat is that etat is this that is brahman you call it god you call it the brahman and so on you think that that is something which is far away away from you but you the atman which is nearest to you that which you think is far away tat is the same as etat etat dvaitat kathopanishad many mantras it repeatedly says this in the fifth valley in the sixth valley and so on etat dvaitat nachiketa is asking about the atman atma tatva yama the acharya is describing brahman and says etat dvaitat that which is spoke about as brahman is verily etat that is this so etat vai brahma why it is mentioned this because i am atma brahma we do not emphasize that brahman which is different from your own self that brahman which is away from you which is different from you no we are asking about that brahman which is your own self 
which is the nearest of the nearest, the dearest of the dearest, which is just your own self. That is our real nature. This idea, even intellectually, if you think about it, transforms your life. Don't weep. Don't think I am small, I am tired, I am suffering. Nothing. You are that infinite self. Your mind and your body and all these various upadhis may trouble you, but ultimately you are that infinite self. Etad and Tat are identical. I am Atma Brahma. <coughs> now, he is the Upanishad Rishi, Mandik Upanishad. He describes his Om from a different point of view with which you are very familiar. Remember that the Upanishad is not a metaphysical or a philosophical text. It does not describe any philosophy, any metaphysics or religion. It just analyzes critically, scientifically a human being's daily experience and tries to find the meaning behind this experience. For example, the Keno Upanishad begins by saying, What is that by which the mind is able to think? What is the power which makes the eyes see, the ears hear, the mind think? Is it the eye which sees or is there a power behind the eye which sees? Is the ear which hears or is there a luminous being, the devata, which is impelling, propelling these ears to see? Is the mind capable of thought? Or is there any power behind this mind which is propelling, impelling this mind to think? Keneshidam patate preshidam mana, kena prana prathama preti yukta, keneshidam vachamimam badanti, chakshusrotram kavudevo yunakti. The first verse is the Kena Upanishad. Then the Upanishad Rishi discovers, after investigation, probing deep within, Oh, it is not the ear which sees, it hears, it is not the eye which sees, but it is the eye of the eye, ear of the ear, manas of the manas. What other language can, descri can it describe? Shrotrasya <coughs> srotram manaso mano yad vacho havacham savu pranasya pranaha chakshushas chakshurati muchadhi raha a person who can realize the eye of the eye, the ear of the ear, the mind of the mind, such a person attains immortality, amrita bhavanti. So there is a power, a shakti, a luminosity within which is responsible for the functioning of the mind and the senses. So he's analyzing our daily experience. So the Mandika Upanishad also analyzes what are the experiences you have in life. I am talking to you, all of you are listening from wherever you are. Technology makes it possible. We say we are awakened. We are in the waking state. Talking, eating, drinking, gossiping, working. So this is called the waking state. Now, after some time, you become tired, you go to sleep. In the sleep, you have dreams. You dream dreams, all funny dreams you get. You, as it were, throw up some objects from within you. In the dream, there is no external object. All that you have is your own consciousness and thought. And your consciousness is capable of dividing itself into a subject and an object. Look at this very strange, interesting phenomenon. You have the capacity to play the creator. Just the creator creates all these objects. 
my consciousness, your consciousness, in dream, is creating various objects and dealing with them. I create an elephant and ride on it. I create a car and go in it. I create food and eat it. So I create an object from out of myself, consciousness, and I, as the bhokta, as the enjoyer, I am able to experience it. This is dream state. And then I go into a state in which there is deep sleep, no dreams, no thoughts, no mind. Again I come back to the waking state. These are the three states which we constantly move in. Waking to dream, dream to deep sleep, and deep sleep back to the waking via dream. Very often, we, many doctors say we don't sleep at all deeply. We are so much disturbed by dreams, even for a few seconds we don't have dreamless sleep. That's why when we get up we feel so tired, exhausted, you couldn't sleep well. That means your consciousness has not taken a break. In sleep there is consciousness, but it is not focused either outwardly and inwardly. Mandaka Upanishad in the 12 verses elaborately discusses this. Jagrat Swapna Sushupti and the genius of the Rishi is to map this Jagrat Swapna Sushupti Avastha onto the three syllables of Om, A, U, Ma. A and U merge into O and you have Ma. Aum is Aum. A represents the waking state. U represents the dream state. And Ma represents the dreamless deep sleep state. Aum. The mapping. Why is it mapping necessary? To show that Om also covers your daily experience of waking, dream and deep sleep. And what about the transcendental experience beyond this? It's called Amatra. O, A, U, Ma. All of them are Omkara. Trikala Tita, beyond these three, is also Om. They say, when you chant the Om, Om, when you end the Ma, then there is Ama, there is matraless, measureless something which lingers on which is beyond a Uma, which is the Turiya, state of Turiya. They are trying to map on the daily experience within time space and leads us on to the experience which is beyond space and time. A U Ma respectively mapped on and corresponding to Jagrat Swapna Sushupti waking state, dream state and deep sleep state merging on to that which is beyond a Uma therefore beyond time, beyond space into the fourth state called Turiya. Turiya simply means fourth, Chaturtha. The state of Turiya is that in which the consciousness is neither inwardly focused as in dream state, outwardly focused as in deep, as in waking state, and totally unfocused as in deep sleep state. 
So what is that state cannot be described. Mandi Kuparishad elaborately discusses it and Shankara's Bhashya gives explanations on that. What is dream state, what is waking state, what is deep sleep state and how all the three of them get merged into Thriya ultimately. So the Om is such a profound syllable which has been thoroughly discussed, analyzed and made into a tool for practice of sadhana in everyday life. They are not theories. They are practically doable and realizable. Om Niranjanam Nityamanantarupam Bhaktanukam Padhrita Vigraham Vai Ishavataram Parameshamidyam Amidyam Tam Ramakrishnam Sharasanamamaha Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna